please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. But uh, one stock that is going to be in focus today is Quest Corp. The company will be acquiring Tata Business Support Services for 153 odd crores. Manglam, give us details. Absolutely. 153 crores is what they're going to pay for acquiring 51% in Tata Business Support Systems. What the company does, you know, Tata Business Support Systems, it's owned by the Tata Sons. They provide customer lifecycle management and business process management services, something which was a strategic gap in Quest Corp's uh, range of offerings. So this is a good fit. But if you take a look at the revenues, TBSS last year revenue was about, what, 661 crore rupees. And this compares to Quest Corp's own revenue of close to 4,157 crore rupees. So it's about 15% addition on the revenue. But the big point and the big positive is the fact that margins, TBSS last year margins was, what, 8.5% as against Quest Corp of 5.5%. So this deal immediately is EPS accretive as the company has notified in its press release as well. Does it dent their balance sheet? Not really because Quest Corp cash and bank balance as of September is close to around 479 crores. So they don't pay much beyond the 153 crores that they have paid as well. So it's all in all a positive move for a company which has grown <coughs> inorganically for a while. We need to know how much is the synergistic benefits and how much more can they scale this business up and get margins. Uh, uh, Moti Lal Oswal makes a very valid point. They say that at 153 crore rupees, they valued this company at half times sales multiple and 5.4 times EV to EBITDA multiple. And this is attractive given Quest itself trades at two and a half times sales and nearly 46 times EBITDA. So immediate uh, valuation unlocking will happen out there. They've uh, increased their 12% uh, their, their target price by about 12% to about 1170 rupees. Okay. All right, uh, so that's on Quest Corp. But uh, <laughs> the other stock that's going to be in focus, and thanks, Manglam, for that, is Jet Airways. Post that company's analyst meet, which everybody was awaiting. Sunil joins in with the key highlights. Uh, well, thanks a lot for that, Ekta. The main thing that the company is focusing is definitely the cost-cutting spree, and the company expects that in next three years, it'll be able to cut the cut the cost per available seat kilometers by 15 to 20 percent what will they really do about it is by negotiating their contracts in terms of sale and distribution also not only that the new airplanes that they'll be getting by june 2018 they'll be fuel efficient so that they expect the fuel cost to go by go down by 15 percent in terms of uh, available seat kilometers they expect a growth of around seven to eight percent versus industry growth of around 15 to 20 percent also they're focusing on productive productivity improvement through low employee cost and deploying more better fuel efficient aircraft they will they'll be purchasing the 737 max very soon and they're expected to be the fuel efficient cost that they are expecting by 2019 they'll be renegoti renegotiating their maintenance contracts and that will bring down their cost further also all new aircraft will be funded through sale and leaseback transactions and that will reduce their uh, lease rental cost the last point is that they are shifting their operations from united uh, arab emirates to europe because they're we're facing lower demand in that area so overall a good analyst may take away back to you all right, good takeaway, reduction in cost per available seat kilometers. That's the operative word as our producer tells us as well. But Watch out for the block deal in l &T Finance Holdings today. Nimesh joins in with all of the details. Nimesh, morning. Uh, morning, Ekta. So, you know, uh, in l &T Finance, there is a, there is a uh, book which was launched last evening by Citigroup. Uh, Bain Capital is selling 2% of its equity in, in uh, l and Finance by block deal today. The price been indicated has been 180 to 188, which means uh, up to 4% discount. Uh, overnight, I'm told there is a good demand, so this will go through easily. Uh, the good part is, you know, there is a 90-day lock-in for Bain Capital after today's block deal. So further supply won't come in. But today, the stock might be in, in, in some bit of pressure because there is a 4% discount offered. And, uh, you know, it's, it's essentially going to get last up by both domestic and FI investors. All right, uh, Ramesh, thanks a lot for that. With that, we'll move to the next one. India's economic slowdown. They may be raising concerns among the investor community, but global consulting group McKinsey Global is very optimistic on India. Dominic Barton, the managing partner of McKinsey Global, says the Indian economy uh, is surprising on the upside as that the government has its foot back on the reforms accelerator, which is good in the long term, gave a number of, what, $10 trillion as a potential size for India's GDP. We're now in the uh, surprise on the upside mm. is what we could see because the the scale of the fundamental changes that are underway are very significant and I, I'm when you just look long term at the what the size of this economy is going to be you know going from 
2 trillion to 3 trillion to 4 trillion to 10 trillion in a pretty short order. Mm. You, if you're a global company organization and you want to be relevant, you're going to have to be here. And I think the, there's a lot of momentum. And, and I think that there was, back in 2013, four, there, was, you yes. know, th there was a lot of different disenchantment. challenges. Disenchantment. I think <laughs> yes. there'd been too much yes. hype, if you will. And the, the foot had gone off the reform mm. uh, accelerator. Mm. And now it's, it's back on. And that, that makes it bumpy in the short term. But in the long term, I think it's very positive. So I, I'm very bullish right now. <laughs> Okay, well, moving on to more stocks today. Players in the logistics space have good reason to cheer. The sector has been granted infrastructure status, which will help it access loans on easier terms. According to the Finance Minister Ministry, the move will encourage manufacturing in the country and help improve economic growth as well. The sector covers cold chain, warehousing facilities, inland container de depots, amongst other things, other than access to larger amounts of funds as external, co um, as external commercial borrowings or ECBs. Uh, players in the sector will also be eligible to borrow from the India Infrastructure Financing Company. And while the infra status, remember, will provide a big boost to the logistics sector, the high cost still remains a major concern. McKinsey's India Chief Gautam Kumra spoke about the high logistics costs in India, says that India needs to take advantage of its coastal routes to make logistics more competitive. Just for perspective, we spend about 14% of our GDP for logistics, and that compares with about 6 to 8% in the developed economy. I think we as an economy, I think our logistics cost is about 15% of the economy. And I think most well-performing economies, high-performing economies would have that in the region of about 6%. Mm. Mm. So think about it. We are paying 10% more on logistics. Now, what does that do to your business model if you're a high logistics-oriented industry? So I think I just take that as an example because yeah. we think you could bring down logistics costs from 14% to 8 or 9%. Now, just take that as an example. Yeah. That requires you to fundamentally overall your railroad mix. It mm. requires you to fundamentally take advantage of coastal economic zone development in India. Okay, well, that's on stocks uh, in focus today. But a look at the national headlines this morning. Congress President Sonia Gandhi has accused Prime Minister Narendra Modi of sabotaging the winter session of Parliament on flimsy grounds and said he lacks the courage to face the House. Hours later, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley refuted the allegations and said Congress too had delayed Parliament sessions in the past. He said that dates would be announced soon and sessions were often rescheduled to ensure they did not overlap with elections. The winter session traditionally convenes from the third week of November and lasts till the third week of December. And as the last day for filing the first phase nominations for Gujarat elections dooms over the Congress party, PAAS leader Hardik Patel is set to hold a press conference in Ahmedabad today. Hardik Patel was supposed to cement his pact with the Congress but cancelled his rally in Rajkot yesterday after a split in the ranks. The two sides have been unable to come to a decision on the seat-sharing formula as the Congress kept only two seats for the Partidar outfit or out of their list of 77 candidates for the Gujarat Assembly elections. Congress has meanwhile released a new list of 13 candidates with four replacements late last night. That's what's happening in the commodity and currency space. Manisha Monik. Morning and thank you so much for that. Well, keep an eye on the metal space today because the latest data shows that uh, most of the metals actually have seen their uh, deficit widen in the last couple of months. Uh, if you look at the copper prices, they have gained on decline in inventories. Uh, a very strong data in sense of China property prices has been supportive for most of these metals. When you look at the nickel prices, well, while they have seen a decline of nearly 10% in last two weeks, but the point is that you have seen output for nickel decline by 11% in this year, and that, of course, is going to be supportive going forward. It's a similar scenario for lead and zinc, where the market uh, are in deficit, and it only has widened for the months of September and October, and that has been supportive. Not just the non-ferrous metals, the ferrous metals also have seen some strength come back. So you have the iron ore prices trading at a two-month highs. Even the steel prices have opened more than a percentage point higher in Shanghai. Uh, of course, it is a strength in U.S. dollar, which is weighing on many of the commodities today. But it is the basic demand supply fundamentals, which would be supportive for the base metal prices during the day trade today. 
All right, Manisha, thanks a lot for that. We'll keep a watchful eye on both the ferrous as well as the non-ferrous metals, given the demands have increased. But let's shift focus to the FNO space as well. Yesterday's trading session, fairly fallow cues coming in from uh, the FNO space. FII has bought about, what, 211 crores in index futures. But uh, no aggressive buying was seen, because if you take a look at the Nifty November futures premium, that fell from 25 to about 21, in indicating some sort of supply at higher levels or maybe some purchase at low levels itself. No real aggression so shown in buying. Given the FII long exposure in index futures too is just about 50%, which compares with 49% two days ago. Uh, they sold about 892 crores in index options, and that was a positive. Not because they unwound about 3,850 long calls, but because they added 5,850 short puts. That means that they believe that there is support at the lower end, at least in the near term, and that is also explained by the kind of outperformance that we're seeing in the mid-cap space. Two strikes were most active, and they are also the strikes with maximum amount of open interest. 10,200 put, that one added about 6.5 lakh shares, and the 10,500 call, that one saw a bit of writing. Uh, keep an eye out on the mid caps. They seem a bit vulnerable given 13 stocks are in FNO band. L the latest entrants are Just Style as well as TV18 broadcast. Some short coverings seen on a couple of stocks uh, yesterday Biocon and Tata Global Beverages. Fresh longs added on Idea and Jindal Steel, and fresh shorts added on uh, at the entire cement pack. Majority of that in Shri Cement. Okay, all right, Mangram. And on that note, we're going to wrap up this edition of Power Breakfast. We leave you with the picks of our bullseye contestants for day two of the week. Thanks for watching. First call for today on the buy side is going to be Adani Enterprise and long positions can be created here keeping a stop loss of 156.40 for the target of 170. Next call on the buy side is going to be Jet Airways and stop loss for Jet Airways has to be maintained at 699 for the target of 756. The next call on the buy side is going to be Voltas and stop loss for Voltas has to be maintained at 615 expecting a target of 660 on upside. The final call on the buy side is going to be Redico and long positions can be created in Redico, keeping a stop loss of 267 for the target of 290. Our first call is a buy call on Tata Alexei for a target of 1021, stop loss at 884. Second buy would be on BF utilities for a target of 556, stop loss at 488. Third buy would be on Ajanta Pharma for a target of 396, stop loss at 1290. And a solitary sell call would be on Petron at LNG for a target of 245, stop loss at 258 half.